Beautiful. Making this place your home. Good morning, gracious ones. Before I begin, I just remembered I have been flocked. <laughs> if you don't know what that means, see David and Uli in the back, but there's something magical about returning home from an airport and seeing your front yard full of these pink flamingos. <laughs> and the look on your neighbor's face is like, dude. <laughs> it was a wonderful thing. So good morning again and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Phoenix. Thank you, Benji. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Reverend Margaret for setting the table for my offering today of some food for thought and action. And today the kind of action I'm talking about is not out there type, but in here type. So I welcome you in the name of the ancestors on whose shoulders I stand. And I welcome you in the name of whatever and all it is that you hold holy. It's always a pleasure and honor to be able to share with you at this time. My reason for being a UU is best summed up by the folks who keep me coming back. They're based in Dublin, Ireland, of all places. And I love the, their quote. And they say, quote, we do not ask what you believe or expect you to think the way we do. But they're UU, so they do ask something. We ask only that you try to live a kind and helpful life with the dignity proper to that of a human being. Welcome all who believe that religion is wider than any sect and deeper than any set of opinions. Welcome all who might find in our friendship strength and encouragement for daily living." End of quote. So today we're talking about sharing journeys. So let me say first off, thanks, big thanks to all of you who have sent emails and notes of encouragement and condolences on the passing of my father, Abdul Hakim Sharif. Thank you all so much for me and my family. I got a little tradition I do, I'd ask you to join me in that. And that is if you'd raise your right hand, and we're gonna say his name three times, it's like a little thrust forward, it go like this. Abdul Hakim Sharif. Abdul Hakim Sharif. Abdul Hakim Sharif. Abdul Hakim Sharif. Thank you. Now some of you sharp ones noticed that his name is a little different from mine. My dad was born Howard Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why he changed it. No. I can't tell you how many times I had to deal with that restaurant joke coming up as a shorty. Uh, but he changed his name when he converted to Islam many, many years ago, as did, as did most of the members of my family, except for their knucklehead eldest son, who is standing in your face today. But that's a longer story for another day. Suffice it to say, we shared a wonderful, engaging, <laughs> journey around spirituality. One that I will continue, will last forever as a matter of fact, because now in my tradition I have another ancestor to call upon. So today I look out on this beaming wonderful congregation and I have a question that I want to call upon for you, and I just have a question, what do we cherish as most holy in our common life? What do we cherish most, most holy in our common life as a congregation and as congregants? Well, like most of you, I'm a UU, and I, we have our principles, but I come up with this little boilerplate thing that I can boil it down and see if you buy this one. Summed up in the phrase, I'm here because I believe in deed over creed. All right? Can, you get a, can I get a buy-in on that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So my question is, so deeds are about doing. So I'm asking myself, how am I doing? How am I acting? And of course, being your friend, I gotta reflect. How are you doing? 
how are you acting right now? In the midst of what Sam called our tumult. So I'm here to acknowledge the tumult. We all know the tumult, we feel the tumult. Some of us so plugged in, we can actually taste the tumult. And it's not about what I know or even what I feel, not what I hate, or not even about what I love or who I am or even what I'm committed to. No. My question is simply, how are you acting? What would an observer see? in my behavior, in your behavior? Am I smiling? Am I joyful? Am I loving? Am I hopeful? Am I hugging somebody? Am I inquiring? Am I present? Am I silent? Am I loud? Yeah, I'm loud. Am I wishful? Am I obedient? Or am I defiant? What does my behavior look like? Can it be compared to an 11 year old? What am I doing? Now I believe my ancestors cannot see my belief, but only that which is displayed maybe. But for sure, your fellow congregants can only see your behavior and my behavior. How am I acting? Not sure? Not sure? Well, that's okay. A Buddhist philosopher Pema Chodron says and reminds us that learning to relax with uncertainty is the spiritual path. Besides Ms. Sondra, we have some other philosophers around here, and they're saying things too. They're saying things like, quote, to this end, our work is about conversations that lead to understanding and express through kindness. The measurable result will be forming new relationships and strengthening existing ones between our members who connect as friends. Johnny said that. Quote, our covenant recited together as a vision for how we wish to be together. We have challenge lightings and responsive readings to remind us of our spirit ritual. Katie Resendez said that. It is important that a very high percentage of congregants participate in every giving level in our annual giving, since that shows active support by the congregation. Yeah, you're right, Larry Reed said that. Another quote, we have also heard expressions of hope. Expressions of hope, a sense of purpose and resilience where does that hope and faith come from? It is grounded in who we are. A community that begins and ends with love. We are people who believe in our souls. And every living being, every living being is beautiful. Digression. My hope and vision is that the little ones who we dedicated this morning are never asked the question that I was asked and probably you were asked from the time they were able to walk. And that is some version of what are you going to be when you grow up? <laughs> Implication is, mommy, daddy, I'm not anything now. Never. So offering always offer an indigenous flip of that script. Try asking them the following. What gifts do you bring? 
They're born with gifts. It is our job to walk with their gifts. To continue that quote, we exist because the work we do together within our walls and in the world is important. We offer the following updates with humility and in the spirit of transparency. We welcome continued input as we could do better. We love you. You're beautiful. Please forgive us. That's what your board said. That's what our board said. End of quote. So there's been a lot of talk about ah, that covenant. You know, we read that. Margaret clarified it a little bit this morning with that UUA wide covenant that's listed in our order of services, our chalice, and our covenant. That is not our covenant. It ain't our covenant. Printed in your order of service is our covenant. I ask you to take a peek at that now, if you would. Just take a peek at that. This is what we have said how we're going to be with one another. This is a commitment that I made to this congregation and hopefully you also. Ah, that covenant. Is it a creed? Or does it show up for you and me as a deed? I'm committed to the role our congregation plays in my religious exploration. And I respect the shared ministry of each even those I do not agree with. Of each congregant, each staff member and minister, especially the ministers, thank you very much. Just kidding. I acknowledge and I accept my responsibility, my role as a community member, approaching each encounter with what? Curiosity, generosity, and the big one. Patience with the process. I honor differences as opportunities to learn. I listen to what others say. I do my best to communicate directly and with humility. So I offer you to really take so take a moment and be with this. Read that in your spare time. The last words, thus do I covenant. That reminds me of a story, this is reflection time and journey, of about many years ago, I was attending an international gathering of men in Washington, D.C a group called the Mankind Project, Mankind Project International. We've initiated close to 50,000 men now over the last 20 years into what we call the sacred masculine. What does it mean to be a man in the 21st century? A little shout out to the Future Masculine Men's Group, which I'm happy to say has now decided that meeting once enough ain't enough. One of the men came up to me and asked me, if it, was I okay with that? Are you kidding? Please, that's, I'm so excited about that little digress there, yeah. So I was at this meeting, there were hundreds of men there. And I looked around and sort of kind of like, everywhere I go, sort of kind of like me and Sam now, but I was the only black man around there. <laughs> And I looked at him and I said, you know, you need to change the name of this organization. Now, I want to let you know how much love and respect I have for this organization, so much so that I gifted my father their weekend training on his 70th birthday. So don't misunderstand. And he never let me forget what that was like to be in the presence of 60 white men who got down on their knee to honor him. See, he grew up at a time when he could not walk down the street with a white person. These are the stories I grew up with. 
Dad would have to get off the sidewalk with the white man coming. So we were in this in DC, and I looked around and like some of y'all, I was kind of angry a little bit with the process. And I raised, we were electing leaders, and I raised my hand and I said, hey, you need to change the name of this organization. You do great work, but it's not the Mankind Project. Let's change it to the White Mankind Project. <laughs> <laughs> It was kind of obvious to me that's what it looked like. So the leader, one man, I'm going to call his name, John Stanley Miller, invited me up, and he looked me right in the eye like I'm looking at you. And he asked me the same question I'm going to ask you about the tumult. He looked at me and he said, what you going to do about that, Johnson? Ooh, 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 I can still feel that punch. Like what you go, you just gonna sit here and jump up and down and call everybody names. What are you, what are you, what are you gonna do about it, Johnson? Well, I got a lot of mule in me, and sometimes it takes a two by four. <laughs> but part of that is once I get it, I got it. So from that moment was born racial justice and multicultural work within the Mankind Project. It has spread now throughout the United States and in some foreign countries. Happy to report it. But that froze me. So I'm offering it to you too today. What are you going to do about the tumult? I offer, there's a lot of blame and there's a lot of shame. I call them our, what do I call these? You got anybody know about these? Yeah, the blame and shame pistols. We talk about them in our men's work. When we take the blame gun, put it in your pocket. Here's your same pistol, put that away. Right, John? Right. That's right. You might need them, but put them away. Put, put them away. What is left if there is no blame? If I agree, I can't blame nobody. And there's nobody to shame. I might make a little space. I love to show up. So I don't want to know how angry you are, because I'm angry too. Not how frustrated are you? Not how tired of all this mess? No. So we've asked, and folks have responded, and we're taking that in. And in the spirit of radical ritual, I'm going to ask Benji, and Vince, and Mary, and Amy, and Rev. Margaret, to come stand right down. You may have noticed in the front of our chalice is a beautiful little treasury box. It's a box with a mirror in it. It's a box with a mirror in it. The mirror that's reflecting at us. We're going to place, you better stay right there. <laughs> Ain't no accidents, no accidents in the world. None. By the way, you know, I was supposed to do sermon last Sunday. And the great event coordinator in the sky had another idea. She said, no, I'm going to call your daddy home, so you just wait a while. So these are the cards of concern, of feelings, of wishes, of dreams deferred. So I hope to make Abdul proud when I do what I'm about to do. So I offer these statements, these questions these congregational admonitions to the board, often to the staff, often to the leadership. And I ask the congregation to bear witness to the trust that we place in all of these folks and in their position, and also in ourselves, to hold them and ourselves accountable 
to these questions and admonitions, to cherish them and to do the right thing. Amen. You see, we're just ordinary people. We don't know which way to go. We're just ordinary people. Maybe we should take it slow. We're just ordinary people. We don't know which way to go. Blame, change. We're just ordinary people. Maybe we should take it slow. You see, the creation of the beloved community demands, demands no less. The creation of the beloved community demands no less of each of us. No less of each of us. After all, they, we, he, she, him, her, we all just ordinary people. We love you, you're beautiful, please forgive us. Blessed be, amen, ashe. Yeah.